Hello, everybody. Last episode, I covered the project window, which is down here. And this episode, I'm going to be covering the source monitor right here. First of all, this is a window that you can play back media in. And this is kind of a media viewer. Quick overview. This is your sequence. Once you edit clips in here, you're going to drop them down into your sequence down here. And then your sequence will be projected up here in your program monitor. But this is like a quick editor up here. First of all, there are a couple ways of loading clips into the source monitor. If we go down to the project window here, I'm going to hit tilde over this and go full screen so I can kind of look at one of these bins here. I'm going to hold down option, double click on my card here, and it opens up card number two in its separate tab. I'm going to go to icon view and look at some clips here. And I'm going to grab this and go larger screen here. All right, so let's start looking at some of the footage here. Say I want to grab this clip like right here and look at it in the view and, and view it in the source monitor. If I actually scrub this through and find it on a portion where I want to start, like maybe right there in the middle, it will actually open it up with the playhead right on that frame that I've got it on right now. So let's double click on that. It loads it into the source monitor up here. And now we can play this back by simply pushing spacebar. Spacebar is a play pause button. If I press spacebar again, it pauses. If I press spacebar, it plays and pauses. There we go. Now a very core feature of this source monitor here is using the keys JKL. JKL is something that's used by pretty, pretty much by professional editors around the world. And the keys are sequenced right next to each other, JKL. So you can put your three fingers right on the keys and easily control what you're viewing in this window. J in the source monitor, and it's the same as the sequence as well, is rewind. You hit J and it rewinds. You hit K and it stops. You hit L and it forwards. Now, a couple of shortcuts while we're here. We can hit home and it will jump to the beginning of the clip. If you hit end, it jumps to the end of the clip. And those are actual keys on your keyboard, the home and the end key. Home takes you to the beginning and takes you to the end of the clip. J rewinds. And here you can see the playhead moving backwards. K stops. L goes forward. Now, if you hit J once and hit J again, it goes faster. If you hit J again, it goes even faster. J again, it keeps going fast, and it speeds through the clip fairly quickly. Let's open up another clip here, a longer clip. This is a three-minute clip right here, so this would be a good one to, to shuttle through really quickly. All right, J once, notice uh, now Notice the playhead actually started right where I had my scrubbed, scrubbed playhead at. J again, J again, and again, and again, and again, and it goes faster and faster and faster, and K stops. Now L goes forward, hit L again, it goes faster, Hit it again, goes faster, 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 faster until it goes uh, maxes out at its top speed. Let's go through some of the icons down here and explain what everything is here. First of all, this right here, let's go through this little thing. This is a zoom bar. If you want to zoom up to individual frames here, this is something they've kind of uh, changed for 2017. They've made this a little bit more functional where they have this little uh, dot right here. And you grab this dot and you pull it to the right and notice it zooms in until you get so close that it shows individual frames here and now as we hit our arrows left and right left will jump through one frame at a time going backwards your arrow right will jump through one frame at a time going forward and we've zoomed up all the way that we can on this so we can see all the individual uh, playhead frames here if we grab this here we grab it it'll zoom back out so you see the entire clips duration from beginning to end. Okay, so that is the zoom bar right there. Let's go through some of these items down here on the bottom. Now what these items are, this is a marker right here. This adds a marker to the clip anywhere on the clip, on the frame where you land. If you hit that, if you want to add a note, you can hit marker there, or you can hit the letter M, which will do it. You can go up here, and it's added a marker on that frame. You can double click. It'll open this up, and you can put notes on it. And other things, if a director or somebody is going through the footage, they can put markers on it to put notes for editors. And uh, chapter markers and a whole bunch of other different things there, which we'll go through in a later episode when we touch on markers. Moving on down the line here, we've got in point and out point. This is how you set in points and out points. If you're going to make an edit here, I'm going to get to the beginning of my timeline by hitting home. And actually, I'm going to right click on this marker and clear that marker out. Clear all markers. Now, as I hit L to go forward, or I want this clip to start. Right here, the camera's moving a little bit. I want to get it right at the beginning of the pan, right there where it starts to pan. Hit J to rewind. K to stop, and I put, and I hit this for my endpoint. Hit I for endpoint, play, and I, as I get to the end of the shot that I want, I hit O for out point. Right there is a duration that it's going to save, and it's going to be able to edit down to the sequence. We'll get into this later, but that's what these items do here. That's your endpoint, that's your out point. And the shortcuts for those are simply I and O. If you want to change your endpoint, you move your playhead where you want it, hit I, and it changes your endpoint. 
and you hit O for your out point, I and O on your keyboard, and it sets your in point and out points on the keyboard there. To clear those, you simply hit on a PC, it is Control Shift X. On a Mac, it is Option X, and it will clear your both your in point and your out point and put it back to default. I'm going to undo Control Z or Command Z on a Mac, and here I'm going to show you the next little shortcuts are go to in point, go to out point. If you want these to jump to your in point and out point, you hit right here, and then the shortcut is Shift I to jump to your in point and Shift O for your out point. It'll jump to those points in your timeline. Also, once you've set endpoints and outpoints, you can hit your arrows up and down. Watch this. First of all, I'm going to hit home and go to the beginning. Now I'm going to hit arrow down. What that does is it jumps to the next edit point, which is my endpoint. You hit arrow down again and it jumps to the next point. Hit arrow down again and it jumps to the end. And same as if I hit arrow up, it goes backwards to the outpoint, to the endpoint, and to the home position. These are simply your step back one frame forward and step forward one frame as well. If you hit here, it goes Let's, let me put this in the middle here somewhere. I'm going to hit Control shift x and clear my endpoints and outpoints. And now I'm going to hit this little item right here, and it goes back one frame at a time. If I hit this one, it goes forward one frame at a time. And all you have to do for the shortcut is hit left arrow and right arrow. I never use these buttons down here because I use the shortcuts. So I hit arrow left, and it goes back one frame at a time. Arrow right goes forward one frame at a time. By the way, a little shortcut here is if you hit shift and arrow left, it jumps five frames at a time while you're holding shift and shift right and shift arrow right will jump forward five frames at a time. So just the arrow does one frame at a time, shift arrows does five frames at a time. And this is simply your play right here. We will get into these in a future episode, but this is you basically insert edit once you've done an endpoint and an out point, and you hit this, it will insert edit it to your timeline. Insert edit it, shoves everything down, and inserts your clip. Overwrite, right here, will overwrite anything in the playhead's path, and it will lay the edit down to your sequence. And your shortcuts for that is comma and period. This right here is export frame, export the frame of the playhead. You just export it to a bitmap or a JPEG or different formats here and you can hit browse and find the location then you can save it and you can name it up here and save out a still image and it will save it as a resolution of the original video clip uh, to a still image. This here is not there by default. This is toggle proxies. We'll go over this in a future episode as well. And this is your button editor down here. Your button editor, as you click on that, it will allow you to add certain things. And I have added my proxy item right here. I've dragged that down and added my proxy item right there. And we'll go through that later on. I'll have an episode specifically on proxy editing. Okay, up here we've got, this is the time code of the video that we're on. And this is the time code that the camera has generated. This right here, let's go through these numbers. First of all, the far left number here is 16. That is your hour meter right there. That's 16 hours. This is 43 minutes. This is 52 seconds and 14 frames. This clip, as you move through it, will change its frame position and second position. And uh, if you move it far enough, eventually it's minute and possibly even its hour position as well. But that is the time code of this clip. This clip, if you go to the beginning by hitting home, it starts at 16 hours, 43 minutes, 34 seconds, and 12 frames. At the end, it ends at 16 hours, 44 minutes, 5 seconds, and 17 frames. And over here on the right, what you've got is uh, the duration of your in and out points. So the duration between your in and out point, this clip here is now 6 seconds and 13 frames long from the in point to the out point. If I clear that, Control shift x it shows the duration of the entire clip, 31 seconds and 6 frames. This here we'll get into when we get into compositing, but this basically fits your image to the screen that you're looking at. You can pull this down and tell it to go 10% and it zooms out. You can go 200% and it zooms in and then you have these little scroll bars to kind of look at the image here. And if you pull this down and say fit, it will fit it back into the screen. Moving over, this is also a couple edit buttons right here. This media clip here has both video and audio. If you click on the audio, it jumps to the audio meter. This was shot on a red camera. There was no mic plugged in, so that it has audio channels that were recorded but didn't have any actual audio record to it. There's no waveforms here showing that the audio levels were completely, that there was really no mic plugged into the clip. If I hit video, it jumps back to the video. You can also use these to grab your in and out point and you drag it down into your timeline. If you grab this, it will just grab the audio and drag it down into your timeline. We'll go over that in a future episode as well as we start getting into editing. 
if you are working with high resolution footage, this little drop down menu right here will allow this clip to play back uh, quicker and easier if you're on a, a system that doesn't that does not play back the full quality footage very well. Right now it is playing back at full quality. However, I have the proxy button toggled right now, so it's actually accessing the proxy. If I turn that off and I try to play this footage at full quality, this is 5K footage here. If I play this back, eventually it's going to start strobing and dropping frames, and it's going to have issues processing all this footage at the same time. So what you can do here, especially if you're working with like 4K or 5K red footage, you can pull this and drop, you can drop this menu down and hit, let's play this back at one quarter the resolution. Since it's playing in a smaller window, it really won't matter that it's only in one quarter of the resolution. It's just, it is dropping down the resolution just for, just for the sake of playing back the clip at real time. And then when you drop it in your timelines or editing, it's actually referencing the full quality footage and you will not lose quality. It's just doing this for your edit. If I press play, this will play back a lot better at one quarter resolution than it will at full resolution. Over here on the right, you have source monitor settings. If I click on this, it'll bring up a bunch of options to show here. Uh, we can tell it to show our audio waveform, our alpha channel, and composite video is the standard. It shows the composite video right here. We'll show instances of these things here when we get into multi-camera editing and other things as well. we got the playback resolution, which is actually this drop-down window right here. Pause resolution is pretty much always at full. You can leave it at full. It renders that the full quality clip when you pause. I have other items like loop. If you hit loop, when it hits the end of the clip, it'll go back to the beginning of the clip and just keep playing and playing and playing forever. Transport controls, check marks, it's just these items down here. And you have other items that you can tell it to show or not show by check marking them or unchecking them here. Such as safe margins, if we check mark that, you notice you get safe margins for title safe and action safe. I'm going to turn that off right now. One other item you have are these overlays. You can tell it to display time code by turning on your overlays here. And you can go under these settings here and go under overlay settings and do a custom overlay or under settings and tell it exactly what you want it to display on screen. So I'm going to turn my overlays off for right now. And last thing in the source monitor I'm going to cover is this little drop down menu right here. If we click on this, you will have the same options that you see down in the other menu, little menu drop downs here, where you can close that panel, you can undock the panel, you can close other panels in this group, and a group is considered all these other items right here. I'm not going to really go through these items right here today, but we'll go through this in a future episode with effect controls, audio clip mixer, and the metadata. We'll cover those in a future episode. But right now, that is a quick overview of what the source monitor is used for. And this, once again, is used for a basic editor to basically set your endpoints and outpoints and shorten the clip down to the portion that you need to drop down into your timeline and uh, edit the movie the way you want it to be edited. Next episode, we'll go over the timeline window or what can also be considered the sequence window.